Thank you, Gary. And good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining today. And um, so welcome to our webinar, which is on building an online store using Shopify. Um, so I'll hand over to Gary to introduce himself. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Gary Parker. I'm the managing director um, of CNT Associates. We are a, uh, a funding and uh, business support organisation uh, based in South East London. This presentation today is brought to you uh, as part of the Bexley Council and UK government funded uh, UK Shared Prosperity Fund. Uh, this is the talking business uh, programme uh, for um, Bexley. If anybody uh, wants to join, uh, there is some information at the end, um, or you can um, uh, contact us directly. Um, you have to be based in the London Borough of Bexley to join this program. It's a free program of business support um, and uh, access to uh, training grants and some other uh, benefits. Uh, if you're not from um, uh, Bexley, there are other programs. Uh, we operate one in uh, Greenwich and there are other programs in many other uh, London boroughs or outside of London if you're from outside of London today. Um, CNT has been uh, in business for 20 years. Um, I've been managing director for the last 10 uh, and we work with a very wide range of clients ranging from small businesses uh, to much larger authorities, uh, businesses and partnerships. Uh, for more information, look at our website, CNT Associates. Uh, I'll now hand back to my colleague, Sybil, who's going to do the main presentation today. Thank you, Gary. And um, my name is Sybil. I work with c and Associates, and my background is in website design. I provide web design and development services to small businesses. And for the last four years, I've been working with a range of small businesses within different um, industry sectors, helping them to improve their online presence through better web design. So here's the outline for today's workshop. We're going to talk about what Shopify is. We'll do a brief intro to dropshipping talk about the Shopify theme store, initial setup of Shopify apps and marketing your online store. There'll be time for questions and answers and we'll give you our contact information at the end. So first of all, what is Shopify? If you're not familiar with this, it is a complete commerce platform that allows you to sell in multiple places, including online and in person. It was founded in 2006 and today millions of businesses in over 170 countries around the world have made over 444 billion US dollars in sales using it. So um, Shopify really is a massive platform and there is so much potential um, with using it. There's many benefits of using Shopify and we'll go through a few of them here. You don't need to worry about upgrading or maintaining software or web servers because all the maintenance is done for you. You don't need to be a designer or developer to create an online store because um, no coding skills are needed. The themes are very customizable, um, again, without the need for editing any code. So very little technical skill is required. You can use Shopify from any compatible device like a laptop, desktop, smartphone or tablet. All you need to start selling is an internet connection and the products to sell. 
And if you don't have any products yet, you might want to try drop shipping, and we will talk a bit more about this later on in the presentation. Here are a few more benefits of using Shopify. There's no limit to the number of products that you can sell on your store. It's very easy to manage your products and to accept payments. You can sell to international markets with the new Shopify markets feature. It includes excellent marketing and SEO tools. SEO stands for search engine optimization. If you need more features and functionality, there's thousands of apps to choose from on the Shopify app store, both free and paid apps. And finally, you always have access to the Shopify support team 24 seven via different channels such as chat, email, phone, and the community forum. So help is always close at hand. Now, who uses Shopify? Many large companies also use Shopify, including Gymshark and the Cambridge Satchel Company, as well as artists like Beyonce, Adele, and Rihanna, who use Shopify for their own personal brands. But it's not just the large businesses who use it. Um, whether you're a sole trader or whether you run a large enterprise, then Shopify is very scalable and it offers a plan to suit everyone. So if you don't have products yet to sell, there is um, drop shipping, which is a business model which has become very popular recently. So briefly how it works is the products are sent directly from your supplier to your customers. So you never need to manage any inventory or ha handle shipping logistics during the process or if that's done for you. You only buy the products once you make the sale. And a few examples of drop shipping apps that work with Shopify are AliExpress, Printful and DTG UK. So apps like Printful, for example, these are print on demand apps. So the way these work is, say for example, you are running a drop shipping t-shirt business. You might have all of your t-shirt products displayed on your online store, but you don't actually have the stock physically in your home or in your warehouse. Um, when the customer places an order, then the product is made, it's printed, and then it's sent directly to your customer so you never have to handle any stock yourself. And here's a, a diagram showing the four different steps. So step one is a customer places an, on, an order on your online store. Second step is the order gets sent to the supplier. Step three is the supplier will prepare and pack the order. Um, if it's something like a, a printed product, they will print the, the product for you. And step four, the order gets dispatched and sent to your customer. And here are the steps you need to take to find suitable drop shipping suppliers. So first one is do your research online. This is very important. Step two, contact manufacturers and distributors. Step three is you can attend trade shows and exhibitions. Step four, consult with local wholesalers or distributors. And number five is to verify their credentials because you want you want to make sure that you're working with a, a reliable and reputable drop shipping company. Okay, moving on to how much Shopify costs. So Shopify offers a whole range of different plans. The basic plan is usually £25 a month. But currently there's an offer where you can get the first month for only one pound. 
so it's recommended that you try out the, the platform. Or alternatively, you can contact us about setting up an unlimited trial store for you. So what this is about is we can create the basic store. So we'll just um, open up a, um, a store with your details and um, you, it's an unlimited trial store, meaning that you have um, no time limit on how long you can use the store for. Um, you can use it to explore the platform, um, do whatever you like um, to find out if it's uh, the right platform for you. And um, you won't have to pay any Shopify hosting fees until you're ready to launch and go live. In terms of credit card fees, if you're on the basic Shopify plan, then for each transaction, you'll pay 2% plus 25 pence. And you don't pay any transaction fees unless you enable a third party payment provider. But in most cases, this is not necessary because you can use Shopify's own payment provider, which is called Shopify Payment which we recommend using as the fees are, reliable, um, are reasonable. And as mentioned, Shopify also offers other plans. There is a starter plan, which is five pounds per month if you're selling purely on social media and you want the very, or you only need a very limited um, set of features to begin with. And um, the range starts from like four, five pounds per month to basic Shopify to advanced etc until Shopify plus which is for very large enterprises so there really is a plan to suit every business's needs now we'll talk about the Shopify theme store first of all what is a theme so the theme is a set of styles, fonts, colors, which when applied to your store, it will determine the look and feel of the store. And it's important to choose a theme that really reflects your branding and your company's values. With Shopify, it's made very easy and they have a theme store. The link is on the slide there. And you can choose from a range of free and paid themes and the paid themes offer more features and customizations but you can easily achieve a great looking store even with a free one and the good thing about the themes is that no coding knowledge is required in order to customize your themes so um, very little technical knowledge required here So moving on to how to set up your store. So if you go to the link here, shopify.com slash UK and click the start free trial button in the top right hand corner of the screen, then follow the steps um, to set up your store. So you'll be asked a few questions about your business. What are your selling goals? and you'll be taken to the admin screen. Um, or the alternative, as we mentioned before, is if you contact us, then we can set up an unlimited trial store for you. So you won't need to pay any hosting fees and you have as much time as you like to try out the platform. So once you have activated your Shopify account, you'll be taken to the Shopify admin, which looks like a screenshot here. So on the left, you have the different um, areas in the menu, like orders, products, customers, and so on. Um, so from here, at this point onwards, you're ready to start customizing your store. You can upload your products, set up payments, shipping, discounts, taxes, and everything else.
So we're going to talk about the few different um, things you need to set up within your Shopify store. Of course, there's a lot more to this than we can go through in the presentation today, but this will give you a good introduction to it. So let's talk about adding products to your store. So when you do this, make sure to add as much detail as required about your products, especially those that will help with SEO. Now, search engine optimization, if you're not familiar with the term, is a process of adjusting and optimizing your website so it appears higher in search engine results rankings. And the way to do this is to um, include keywords in things such as your product title, product description, um, and as mentioned here, so name, um, name of the product, description, and the URL or handle. Um, so the, the URL is the link to the product page on your website. Um, add as much detail as you, as you can and make sure the information is accurate, up to date, and there are no errors in it. If applicable, then you can add variants. So variants are different variations of a product. For example, a t-shirt could be available in different sizes or different colors. Product images are very important. They can make a sale. So make sure to show off your products at their best and highlight any special or unique features with close-up photos. So the key here is use good quality um, photos, um, photograph your product from different angles. And we recommend to keep your images the same dimensions, ideally square, as this works best and it keeps your store looking neat and tidy. Then once you've up uploaded your product images, you can rearrange the order of them as you see fit. So let's talk about collections. So when you have some products in your store, as your store is growing, you're going to want to organize them into groups. So a collection is a group of products that have some features in common that customers might look for when visiting your store. And here is a few examples. So clothes specifically for men, women or children, items of a certain type, size or color, sale items or seasonal products such as holiday cards and decorations. So a product can appear in more in one or more collections. And in terms of displaying your collections, you would usually want to do this on the home page and also add your collections to the navigation bar at the top or even bottom of your site to help your customers easily find them. And with Shopify, there are two types um, of collections. They can be created manually or automatically. So manual collection obviously is where you manually add products to a collection, whereas an automatic collection um, is based on a set of rules. So say for example, your rule could be all products under 10 pounds. Whenever you create a product with a price of less than 10 pounds, it will automatically get um, added to that collection. Let's move on to discounts. So offering discounts is a very powerful marketing strategy for your Shopify store or for any, any type of e-commerce store, in fact. So there are uh, different types of discounts that you can create in Shopify. So discount code is when a customer manually 
enters a code or you can create an automatic discount which is automatically applied when um, the customer is at the cart or checkout stage. There are different formats so you can create a fixed value discount for example five pounds off. There are percentage discounts and then there are buy x get y discounts for example buy one product get a second half price. Discounts can be applied to specific products or variants or collections so it's very flexible in terms of how you can apply your discounts and there are some options available so you can specify things like the number of times the discount can be used, whether it starts and expires on a certain date. You can specify cu which customers are allowed to use a discount. You can set a minimum order value and you can choose whether it can be combined with other discounts or not. In terms of shipping, um, when you're thinking about how your products are going to be received um, or sent to your customers rather, Shopify allows you to choose a variety of different shipping rates and methods to appear as options for your customers or you can keep it simple and provide a single option. So you can choose to offer flat rates so the customer will pay a the same rate regarding regardless of how many products they're ordering or how um the value of their order you can set price based rates rates so that the shipping will be determined according to the value of the customer's order you can set weight based rates so the shipping is calculated according to the weights of the products that the customer is ordering. You can offer free shipping if you would like to do that and you're also able to offer a local pickup service which is like click and collect. Customers can order products from your store only if the country or region where they want the order to be shipped is included in one of your shipping zones. So what this means is when you're setting up your shipping, you need to create zones. So a zone can be a region or um, a set of countries um, that that shipping rate is applied to. Now, if a customer is based in a country region which is outside the shipping zones that you have set up, then they won't be able to complete the checkout and they'll be unable to order from you. So when you're setting up your shipping, just um, be mindful and think about which countries or regions that you are willing to ship your products to. Adding pages um, and blogs. So if you need to add information to your store that doesn't change often, then you can create pages to give that content a permanent location. So for example, you might have a page about us. So some information about um, your company and yourself maybe the story behind your business or um, you might want to or it's highly recommended to have a contact us page on your store anyway. So static pages like this um, that don't change very often you can create um, pages for and add them to your website. So when you're creating a page, um, you can choose whether you want it to be visible immediately or schedule it for later. 
So usually if it's a page like about us or contact us, you want it to be visible immediately. But the scheduling feature really is more suitable for something like a blog post because you might have a plan to post um, once every two weeks. So you want the post to be visible at a certain date and time. So that's when the scheduling feature uh, will be useful. Shopify also includes a built-in blogging feature. And so blogging is a great way to increase customer engagement. And the reason is because you're um, continuously adding new content to your site. You're keeping it interesting for your customers. So your customers will want to keep coming back for, for more. Um, it can help to generate more sales. And it's also good for improving SEO or search engine optimization. And the reason for this is that search engines like websites that are being updated on a regular basis. So posting blogs is a good way to help your site's SEO. And as mentioned, um, blog posts can also be scheduled. And once you have created um, your pages and a few blogs, you want to create a menu and add your newly created pages and your blog to it. So in Shopify, there is a, um, a navigation um, or a menu option. So you need to go into the navigation area and add the pages um, and blogs to your menus um, to help your customers find your content easily. And on your site, you'd usually have a menu at the top of the page, which is called the header, and another menu in the bottom of the page, which is called the footer. Now we'll talk about connecting a domain. So when you create your Shopify store at this, right at the start, Shopify will automatically create a domain which ends in .myshopify.com. Now, if you're not sure what a domain is, it is what um, is displayed in the address bar of your browser. And um, so this this um cust um this domain that's allocated to you by Shopify um can be customized by connecting your own domain, which we highly recommend that you do. So there are two methods for doing this. You can either purchase a domain from Shopify. If you do this, it will be added to your store automatically. And this saves you time, especially if you don't have much knowledge about hosting a website. Then you've got a second option, which is to buy a domain from a third party, such as GoDaddy, for example. But the downside with this is that you will have to redirect the DNS records yourself, which can be tricky. So if you do purchase um, a third party domain, there will be some additional configurations that you need to do within the domain settings. So the recommended option is to buy a domain from Shopify because it's quicker and easier. Um, however, if you do buy a Shopify domain, they will be slightly more expensive than buying a third party domain. So bear that in mind. So Shopify apps. Um, in the Shopify apps app store, you'll find a large range of free and paid apps. Now, when you first create your Shopify store, Shopify um, gives you all of the tools you need to start selling right away. So nearly everything you need 
is there right out of the box. But there's always reasons why you'd want to extend the functionality of your store. And to do that, you can make use of apps. Now here are a few examples of different apps that you will find in the app store. So there's automated marketing apps, there's SEO, email capture, social media plugins, there's reviews, there's enhanced contact form builders, there's analytics apps, upselling, cross-selling apps, automated chat and email response apps. And there was also invoicing apps, or photo gallery apps, and the list goes on. There's just so much more you can do with these. And because there are so many different apps available, um, there is a blog post called the 20 plus best free apps for your Shopify store. And at the end of this presentation, there's a link to that blog post if you want to take a look at that. So let's talk about marketing your online store. So you put in the, all of the hard work into designing and building your online store, but the work doesn't stop there because then you need to think about how to promote it and start getting those orders in. So e-commerce offers a lot of benefits over traditional brick and mortar stores, such as low barriers to entry and low cost of startup. But there is one disadvantage to online stores, and that is the lack of footfall, which means that your marketing activities are vital. Because you can have the best looking, perfectly designed online store, but if no one knows it exists, then it's not going to make you any money. So social media and email marketing will be your best friends when starting out because they're relatively cheap and very effective. And as you start to build up a basic marketing strategy, you can experiment with different methods like pay-per-click ads, these are ads that you might find on search engines such as Google and Bing and also social media platforms like Instagram ads, um, LinkedIn, Facebook ads, etc. There's also SEO. There's non-online marketing like word of mouth. Um, if you're an artist, for example, you might display your artwork at ex exhibitions or pop-up shops. There's discount and loyalty cards. There's referral programs, blogging, and many other techniques available to you. So it's a good idea to experiment with different marketing methods and um, tr try them out, see which ones are working and which ones are not working for you. And, and the way to do that is to really track your performance. So many of these online tools um, include analytics or insights um, where you can track the performance. Um, for example, if you are running pay-per-click ads, then you will have access to some kind of dashboard where you can see how your ads are performing. If you're working on your SEO, you would have a tool like Google Search Console where you can see um, how many times your website is appearing in search, how many times it's being clicked, and so on. Um, even if you're sending out email marketing campaigns, then again, you will have access to metrics like how many clicks your emails are getting, um, how many emails are bouncing, how many people are unsubscribing, and so on. 
So and the point I'm making here is the thing about uh, marketing is to always track your performance, look at how your campaigns are um, performing and try to identify any uh, trends and um, see what's not working, what is working. And when you run your next campaign, you'll be able to improve on it. So each time you will hopefully um, get a better performance than the previous one. So I see um, in terms of time, we still have a, um, a bit more time left um, before the end of, of the presentation. So I wanted to go into SEO a little bit more because this is a topic that comes up quite frequently. And um, just to re reiterate, um, SEO or search engine optimization is a process of getting your website to rank higher in search engine results. And um, SEO, is, I think, is important because there are literally billions of searches being made every day, um, especially on Google, by people who are looking for products and services such as yours. So you don't want to be missing out on the chance of being found through search. Now, there are many things that you can do um, to your website in order to help it rank higher. Uh, it's a very big area, but I'll just give you a, um, a few quick tips and things that you can start doing um, once you've launched your store. So the first thing you want to do is to think about your keywords. So keywords are words or phrases that people might type into search engine um, for your website to come up. And you need to have your keywords in various places within your website. Um, so it's in various places means like on your homepage, the first um, headings on your page, your page titles, your meta descriptions. Now, within Shopify, when you create your um, your store, there will be areas where you can input this information. Um, so you'll be able to set the page titles of your home page, for example, and within each product and page, there'll be places where you can set these um, page titles and meta descriptions to help your SEO. Um, Another things you can do are to add alt tags to images um, because search engines can't read images very easily. So an alt tag is a short piece of text that describes what the image is about. So for images, you need to enter in that description. Make sure that your website is loading quickly um, because if people are coming to your site and they're finding that it, um, it's slow to load, they will leave and go to a competitor site, which is not what you want. So if you've got very large images or videos and too much of that type of content, then you need to reduce it because the large, um, large pieces of content like that can slow down your site especially for people who are browsing on a slow internet connection. Check your website on a mobile device, a phone or tablet, because many people are browsing on their phones nowadays. So it's very important that your website is working just um, as good on your, on your phone as on your desktop as well. Um, make sure that your website has a clear navigation so when customers come to your site, they can easily find what they're looking for. It needs to have a logical structure and they can um, find their way around your website without getting confused. And make sure your website has an SSL certificate. Now with Shopify, it's very easy to do that because they provide one for free. An SSL certificate is something that um, encrypts your website and makes sure 
the connection is secure. So you would know that you have an SSL on your website because the URL in the address bar will begin with HTTPS and there'll sometimes be an, a padlock symbol next to it as well in your browser. And um, other things you can do are to get um, backlinks to your website. So backlinks are links from other websites linking to yours. Um, th this is a ranking factor. So getting good websites to link back to yours can help it to, to rank higher. However, um, you need to make sure that the backlinks you have are all from reputable websites and you don't have any spammy links. Um, adding your website to directories, for example, is one way to do that. Um, you can also ask other website owners if they would be happy to link to your website. Yeah, so those are um, a few things you can do in terms of SEO, and I, help, I hope that was helpful to you. So I think, um, yeah, so in terms of marketing, as I said, try out the different methods here and try to work on your SEO and that will hopefully help your store to generate more traffic and ultimately more sales. Okay, so that concludes the main part of the presentation. I'd like to hand over back to Gary now for the uh, thank you, Sybil, for that uh, very comprehensive um, presentation. Um, we'll now take uh, questions from people. If anybody's got a question, you can uh, put it in the chat or you can uh, ask live on screen. You put your hand up. Uh, from Mazzy, is PayPal a third party op payment option? No, so when you go into your um, Shopify admin and set up these payment providers, um, PayPal has its own separate kind of area that you go in to connect your um, PayPal account. So it's not um, one of the payment and uh, the third party payment providers. And PayPal will just charge you um, the the usual PayPal fees. Um, you won't be charged any extra fees um, by Shopify for that. Okay, that's clarified that one. And Mazzy says, thank you. Um, anybody else got a question for Sybil uh, from Jenny? Uh, we currently have a website with Wix. Would you suggest to shift to Shopify for better SEO? Yes, so I have heard that um, Wix is not uh, one of the best platforms, um, unfortunately, in terms of SEO. Uh, I think Shopify is much better for that. And if you are looking to migrate to Shopify, I would highly recommend it. Um, I think Shopify offers a lot more flexibility, um, not just with SEO, but other features as well. I think with um, Wix, you can be quite limited in terms of what you can do with it. So, yes, I would um, re recommend that you look into migrating from Wix to Shopify. Uh, this is from uh, Ami. Could you tell us more about the Southeast Asian market? Hi, Ami. So in terms of your question, is there anything specifically about the Southeast Asian market that you'd like to know about? Um, because I don't have that information offhand, but what we could do if it is if you'd like to elaborate on your question or provide a bit more um, on what you're looking for that we will be able to get back to you um, with a, a more detailed answer on that.
Okay. So you can either leave us your contact details or you can get in touch with us. So I will put our contact details on the screen as well there for anyone yes, who needs it. They, they, all, they all are. Um, this presentation will go on our YouTube channel. Um, the uh, details are there uh, and I'll go through a few of the things shortly. Um, but um, I've got a couple of um, previously collated questions based on questions that people have asked previously. So I'll ask these to Sybil. Um, uh, sorry, Amy's come back and said, customers from Southeast Asia, how is Shopify progressing right now? So I presume is uh, he, he wants to know about the market in Southeast Asia for Shopify. Is it um, uh, popular there compared to uh, other platforms? Yeah, um, I don't know specifically uh, how Shopify compares with other platforms in that particular market, um, Ami. Um, we will need to do a bit more research in terms of that and get back to you um, because I know in general that Shopify like globally is one of the most popular markets, but in terms of specific regions, uh, I don't have that exact information. Uh, I believe it, it is becoming more popular um, in in most areas, but I don't know about that specific um, region of the world. Yeah, uh, Shopify is one of the biggest platforms in the world. It's not the biggest. I think WooCommerce is the biggest. Is that correct, Sybil? Yeah, I think um, yeah, WooCommerce yeah is is more popular in terms of um, probably the reason is that it's free, um, but in terms of whether yeah how how Shopify is comparing with WooCommerce in that particular region, I would need to come back to you with further details. If from Maria, if you move from Wix to Shopify, would you also have to move your domain name too? So, I, hi Maria, I presume that your domain is with Wix, and you can keep it with Wix. Um, you don't have to move the domain to. We don't. You don't have to transfer the domain to another provider or to Shopify. Well, what you will have to do is when you, um, when when the time comes to connect your domain to your new Shopify store, then yes, you will have to, um, do that connection, but um, the domain provider can still be with Wix. Yes. Okay. Um, Thanks. This is uh, good. I'll. I'll uh... Please, if anybody else has got questions, uh, we're more than uh, pleased to answer them. Uh, I'll ask a couple. Uh, what are the factors I need to consider when setting up an e-commerce business? Yeah, so there's several things that you need to think about when shop um, setting up your store. So... If you haven't done this already, then you should do your research in terms of who is your target market, where uh, things about your target market, like um, who are they, what are their age, uh, where, where are they based geographically, what is their income, what sorts of products do they buy, um, because all of these things are going to influence um, aspects like what products you sell, how you price them, how you present them in your store, even the look and feel of your store. So, for example, if you're selling luxury products, your store might look very different if you're um, than if you're selling um, much cheaper products. So things like that need to be considered. Also, um, your branding uh if you have a logo in place already, um, if not, it's recommended to get a logo created and think about your branding. So what colors and fonts that um, would reflect your brand and make sure these are 
also reflected in your Shopify store. Um, things like pricing, which we mentioned, um, if you are going to be drop shipping or not, um, if you're selling physical products, wh who are your suppliers? Have you researched them? Um, where else, where are you going to source your products from? Um, other things you might want to consider are like, as we talked about, what marketing methods you will be using to promote your business. And um, also, uh, yeah, yeah, marketing your business is um, also a big uh, aspect to consider. Okay. Um, my next question is, can I sell digital downloads or subscriptions with Shopify? Yes, you can indeed sell digital products and subscriptions with Shopify. Um, there are apps available that can do this. Now, I don't have the names of the apps uh, right now, but if that is something that you're looking to do, then yes, certainly there are apps that can facilitate um, that feature. Okay, uh, and finally, uh... How can I track the performance of my Shopify store? Yes, yeah, so we talked a lot about uh, tracking performance of marketing. Um, another thing you should do is tracking the how how your store itself performs. So this can be things like how many orders you're getting, uh, how many customers are browsing your store and what countries they're coming from how long or how much time they're spending browsing your site. And Shopify offers some analytics as well. So you can go into your dashboard and view the insights there. Also, if you want um, additional insights, you can also connect Google Analytics. It's a free tool and it will show you even more um, data about your store. So putting all of this data together will really help you to get a picture of how your store is performing and what kinds of improvements you can make to it. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for that, Sybil. Um, uh, I'll just give people a chance to come in again. Has anybody got any further questions for uh, Sybil uh, or indeed myself? um about anything we've mentioned today um as i said earlier uh this will go on our youtube channel in due course so you will have a chance uh to review it. again um the um the address of our youtube channel um is uh on the screen there and uh it's uh, our YouTube channel contains 40 other presentations um, at the moment on a wide range of uh, areas. Uh, as I said earlier, this program uh, has been brought by, uh, it's been funded by the UK Shared Prosperity Fund, a UK government program, uh, and is facilitated by Bexley Council. If you are a Bexley-based business uh, and or deliver services in Bexley, you can join our free business uh, support program. We get free business support from uh, myself, Sybil, and, and others who work with us. And um, uh, at no cost to yourself, and there's some other benefits, uh, like the council is offering a free recruitment service if you've got any recruitment needs, uh, and um, training grants. So anybody who wants a training grant of up to £500 can get up to... Uh, 50% of the cost for any recognized training associated with your business. So there are a number of um, benefits uh, from that. If you're based elsewhere, as I said at the beginning, then there are other programs, including one that CNT runs uh, in Greenwich for uh, nonprofit making businesses in that case. Um, all of our contact details are um, here on the screen. Um, so please get in touch with us if you require any further um, 
uh, information um, and uh, we uh, have a number of webinars in this particular uh, series. Um, the next one is on the 26th um, of March at 11 a.m. and it's entitled How to Write a Funding Application. Uh, again, a form of this is on our YouTube channel, but we haven't run it for a while. Um, and uh, you will, uh, as always, get uh, ample opportunity to ask questions uh, of myself and my colleagues live uh, during the presentation um, on the 26th of um, uh, June, sorry, <laughs> uh, March. Um, there are uh, a range of other webinars in this series. Um, there are up to 10. Uh, I think this is number six, so there's still a number to go. If you check uh, our uh, website or contact us directly, we can tell you um, when the rest of the series uh, is. And uh, we uh, also, if you're on our mailing list, we regularly mail out to um, all uh, of the uh, organizations and individuals on our mailing list with full details of this and our other services. Um, Sybil, is there anything you want to add to anything that you said today or make any further comments on any of the questions? Yeah, um, I would say uh, a good thing is to look at um, a couple of examples. Uh, I don't have them on the slide in front of me, but um, I can provide, if anyone's interested, I can provide some examples of Shopify stores that I have created. Um, if you're interested to see what uh, those stores look like, what kind of products are being sold on there and the capabilities of what Shopify can do, then um, yeah, please feel free to get in touch and we can send you some links um, with examples to um, actual stores that we have uh, built for clients. Okay, uh, thank you for uh, that, Sybil. Um, uh, it's almost midday now, so um, uh, we've run exactly to uh, time. Um, as Sybil said, if you want any further information, please contact us uh, using those uh, contact de details there um, or um, scan the QR code to join our mailing list. Uh, Olga says, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate you joining us today. Um, uh, we know how valuable your time is uh, and we respect that. So we try and keep everything uh, very concise. But if you want any more information or want to join our mailing list, then please use that QR uh, our code or any of the other um, uh, contact uh, information uh, that we've uh, got there. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Uh, if you're interested in how to write a funding application, it's always one of, it's probably our most popular um, um, presentation um, and uh, but Sybil's on digital marketing and Shopify uh, come uh, closely uh, behind that. So thank you all very much for joining us today. And from Sybil and myself, uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>